Hey everybody, welcome. Today I have a very amazing encouragement message that God has put in my heart. In 2020, it started like a big bang, a roller coaster, and now we're coming to the end of 2020. And I believe that God has a word for us. But before I jump into my word, you know, one thing I love about one of our, our foundation that God gave us is worship. And there's something so amazing about worship. I love the fact that um, King David was a worshiper. And every time the Bible talks about how he worshiped the Lord, whether in public or privately. So today, wherever you are, I just want you to gather and really worship. Worship is about bowing down and just giving God what he's worth. So let's go on to worship together. God bless you.
Wow. Welcome back from worship. So I want to talk to you about 2020. I remember that 2020 started out with a shaking. It came out of nowhere, we might think. We might think that we were not ready for 2020. But I'm so thankful that we have a God that, that we serve, that knows everything. He is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He knows what was going to happen. And today, I want to talk to you about the messages put in my heart as we close 2020. I would like to start with a quote by C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis says, Don't shine so others can see you. Shine so that through you, others can see him. I'm going to say it again. Don't shine so others can see you. Shine so that through you, others can see him. John 8, 12. Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. I love that Jesus has this I am statements. I am the bread of life. I am the living water. I am, he has all these I am statements. But one of my favorites is he said, I am the light of the world. I love that. You see, where there's darkness, you know that we need light. I have a question. Have you walked in darkness before? You see, in our home sometimes when all the lights are off and I want to go check if the doors are locked, sometimes I don't want to turn on the light because I think I know the layout of our house. So I'm walking in the darkness with confidence. Then suddenly, boom, I hit something. And I'm like, oh, somebody put something out here. So you see, when there's darkness, you don't walk as confident because you don't know what is hidden, what you can step on, what you can bump yourself into. You see, when you're in dark darkness, sometimes you feel lost. For, sometimes you feel like you stumble. Sometimes you feel like you need protection. Sometimes you feel blind. Even though you're not blind, when you're in darkness, sometimes you feel like you can see everything is blinding. So Jesus says that he is the light that shines in darkness. This whole year has been, to me, a time where it was unknown. Everything seemed like we were walking without vision. It was dark. We never knew what was going to come, whether it was the election, whatever. But I want to say this, that Jesus is the light of the world. So in Matthew um, 4, God talks about what light does. One of the things about light is that light brings hope. In Matthew 4, 16, it says, The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who lived in the land where death casts its shadows, a light has shined. Darkness cannot stand where there is light, period. You see, if you go into a dark room and you just turn on the light, light expels darkness. Light brings hope. And that's why God talks about it in Matthew. He says that the people in darkness have seen a great light. What light have they seen? They have seen the light Jesus, he is the light. He's the one that brings hope in the midst of darkness. He's the one that can light the way out of darkness. I love the story of the birth of Jesus. And one of the things about it, it talks about there was a star, a bright star that the wise men followed. And they followed that star. And that star was actually the one that gave them direction to find Jesus. So light brings hope, but light also brings direction. Direction for what? To find Jesus. Matthew 2 from verse 1 and 2 says, Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from the eastern land arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose and we have come to worship him. You see, light always 
brings people and directs them. Think about the moon. The moon is so beautiful at night. When you see the moon, it's so amazing when you see it. But the moon does not generate its own light. Actually, it reflects the sun. So the moon was made to glorify the sun. So if the moon were able to talk, it will tell you, look at the sun. The sun is where I get my reflection. The sun is everything. Without the sun, I have no light. And that's what I love about we as followers of Jesus. We are supposed to be the light of the world, reflecting the light, Jesus Christ. We are supposed to be the one proclaiming and bringing hope and direction to a world that is in need of hope. The hope is not in us. The hope is in the one we reflect, Jesus Christ. I love Matthew 5 from verse 14. It says, you are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Our light is not in ourself. We cannot point people to ourself. Our light is to point people to the light, the one that can save, the one that can deliver, the one that can heal, the one that brings hope. And in 2020, what I noticed is that people needed hope. People needed deliverance. People needed healing. Fear was rampant. But the answer to that is Jesus. And in our world today, we have to come back again to the main thing. And the main thing that it is, is the world needs Jesus. And Jesus made a way. He, he said to his disciples, go out and preach and teach. He said that. That was the Great Commission. What does that mean? Go out and reflect who I am to a dying world, to a world that is filled with confusion, to a world that is fearful, to the, a world that needs hope. He sent us to be the light, not to point people to ourselves, but to point people to him. That was what Christmas was all about. I remember that the story of Christmas, I remember when the shepherds heard about Jesus, the Bible said it was a dark night and suddenly there was a brightness in the sky. The shepherds came and said that a son has been born. They did not bring the reflection of the light to themselves. No, they said in the city of David, a son has been born. His name is Emmanuel, God with us. What the shepherds did was to point us to Jesus Christ, the deliverer, the one that will be with us, the hope of the world. And that was why we celebrated Christmas. That it was an announcement that light has come, hope has come, joy has come. And that is what God is calling us in this time to bring light, to bring hope, to bring joy, to bring peace, not in ourselves, but in Jesus Christ. So we reflect the light. What does this mean? As we as Christ followers, we reflect him to the world around us. We show people who Jesus is. To the broken, we go to them and sit with them and show them one that can mend them. To the sick, we sit with them and show them one that's a healer. To the blind, we sit with them and show them that there also is one that can pull the veil out. To the hopeless, we introduce them to the one of hope. To the ones in strife, we introduce them to the man of peace. We get to reflect him to the world. We get to tell the world about him. One of the things that is so cool about reflecting Jesus is, I remember that every time you read about Jesus, he would always say, I do what I see my father doing. Jesus also came and reflected his heavenly father. When Jesus healed, he was saying, my father heals. When Jesus delivered, he was saying, my father delivers. When Jesus, um, thought he was saying my father wants to teach you jesus never took the glory and said look at me look at me he always reflected his father 
I know the Father loves me because Jesus showed that. And we as his people, we are supposed to show the world how much he loves them. We are supposed to show them, um, the world that he is for them. We are supposed to show them that he is the only way, the truth and the life. And we don't reflect ourselves on the world, our anger, our impatience. We reflect Jesus to them. We show them how much he loves them. So what are ways that we can reflect Jesus? One, the way we, we can reflect that light, the way we can show the light of Jesus. You see, sometimes light can be bright and sometimes light can be dim. Sometimes when we let things into our life that pushes him away, we become dim lights. People don't see the light. When we let fear come into our life, people see fear instead of seeing Christ. When we let worry come into our life, when we let things come between us and God, we reflect those things instead of reflecting Jesus. Remember Moses when God told him to go and speak to the rock. Moses was so angry that he went and he hit the rock and God said because you did that Moses you will not go into the promised land you might say what Moses had the right to be angry you might say why would God say because of that action Moses could not go into the promised land it was this simple Moses reflected to the people that God was angry at them that was it God is calling us to reflect him to people, not ourselves, not our frustrations, not our anger, but to reflect his love, but to also reflect his truth, to reflect his justice, to reflect who he really is. So what are ways that we can reflect God to people? The things we need to do is the first one is we must spend time with him. Spending time with God, James 4, 8 said, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. I want to say spending time with God makes us look more like God. And when we do that, we can reflect him to the world. You know, what is so cool is that there's a story about Moses going to spend time with God. The Bible says when he came down from the mountain, he was so bright that people were saying, cover your face, we can't see you. Why? The more time you spend with God, the more you reflect him. And when you meet with people, the more they can see Christ through your life. So that's the first thing. We must spend time with him in order to reflect him. The second thing is we must get into the written word. Psalm 119 says, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. We must get back into the word of God. It's great to hear stories, it's great to hear people's message, but nothing can replace the word of God for yourself. No one can replace the word of God for you. Jesus says in the book of John, he said, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word is God. One of the ways that we reflect God is by getting into his word so that we can tell people what the word himself is saying. And the next thing is, we must speak in agreement with his word and not our own feelings. There's a lot of feelings going on in the body of Christ. We feel this way, we feel, and our feelings cause more division. We must agree with the word of God. If God's word says something, that is what we must be speaking. The Bible says in Proverbs 18, life and death are in the power of the tongue. We have to be careful what we are speaking. We cannot be speaking fear, we cannot be speaking anger. We must speak in agreement with the word of God. Are you sick? The Bible says, by his stripes, you are healed. So I'm going to believe for your healing. The Bible says, if there's chaos, are you feeling chaotic? The Bible says that the God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath his feet. 2021 must be us going in alignment with God's word. The next thing, you must obey him. The Bible says in John 14, if you love me, you will obey me. That is one of the evidence of God's um, love language is obedience. So when we, end, when we cross over 2020 to the greatest outpouring of the Holy Spirit in 2021, obedience is going to be key because if we say we love him, he might send you to the corner of your street. He might send you to your neighbor and say, go tell them about me. How do we reflect God? 
we obey him. Then another one that I love, he said, by inviting others into our life to hold us accountable. Hebrews 10, 25 said, don't forsake the assembling, getting together. There's a reason. If you forsake gathering, gathering with people and you live in isolation, you begin to slip into the old habits. Who is there to, to tell you, hey, you're sleeping. No, that is the mentality the enemy wants. He wants you isolated. He wants you not assembling together so that people can look into your life and say, hey, something is off. He said, do not forsake that. And then um, the last one is Proverbs 19, 20. Be teachable. You see, one thing I love is the Bible says that we should be like little children. Be teachable in 2021 as we cross over. Because 2020 has been such a division and chaos of people that don't want to be taught, but they want to be the ones speaking. And God is saying, look at things that there's something I can learn from anybody. Even a child, I've learned things from children. The way they love, the way they don't keep grudges, the way they, are, they, they forget easily. If you discipline them right now, the next minute they're your best friend. That is a teachable person. God is saying we should be teachable. The last point is light brings great joy. I love in Luke 2, 18, 14. That night there were shepherds staying in the field nearby, guiding the flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all the people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will recognize him by this sign. You will find the baby wrapped in snuggly stripes of clothes, laying in a manger. I love that because when the angels came, the first reaction of the people to the light was, they were afraid. But do you know what God did? Through the light, he brought peace. He brought joy. He said, don't be afraid. I have great news. We are supposed to be joy bringers. We are supposed to reflect the joy of God wherever we are. Yes, the Bible says there's darkness everywhere. Yes, the Bible says that, that there's even gross darkness. Isaiah 6, he said, but arise, shine, for your light has come. How do you shine? Joy looks beautiful. Joy is shiny. And where darkness is, where people are gloomy, we can come with the light of God and say, don't be afraid. There's great joy. Jesus is still in control. But I want to end with this. When the wise men came to Bethlehem, the Bible says that Herod did not see the light. Matthew 2, verse 3, and I will be closing with this. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called the meeting of the leading priests and teachers of the religious law and asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? It was surprising to me that wise men from the east saw the light and people that were in Jerusalem did not see the light. In Bethlehem, they did not see the light. Why? I believe that one, some people will not see the light because of blindness of the enemy. Those are the people we pray for. But secondly, I also believe that sometimes our lights are not bright enough for them to see. You see, there were many stars that night, but the wise men saw the brightest. And I want to say that as we close 2020, it's time for you as a good soldier to not entangle yourself with the things of the world, things that will make your light not so bright so that others can see and see Jesus. Like Herod, he didn't see the light because he was blind. But there are many people seeking the light, trying to look into our life to see that light that will bring hope, that will bring joy, that will bring peace. But if we are entangled with the things of the world, if we're not spending time with him, if we're not reading his word, if we're not worshiping, if we are not being people that speak life, our lights will be dim and many will not see Jesus. I believe the greatest harvest of souls is about to happen. I believe that 2020 was a preparation for 2021. I believe many, is going, many are going to know Jesus. My question is, 
what if we choose the closing of this year as we prepare for the next year to make sure that the Holy Spirit shows us things in our life that needs to go so that we can be lights so that others can see Jesus. I just want to say, God bless you. Don't, don't let 2020 be something that you can look as a loss. I just want to say, even with the chaos of 2020, God did some great things. Sit down with your family and just ask. I'm sure they'll tell you, God still moved in 2020 and we can rejoice in that. God bless you.